For more on this, Byron York, Chief Political Correspondent for the Washington Examiner and a Fox News contributor. Byron, always good to have you with us. Um, what do you expect this morning as uh, the Department of Justice gets pushed a little bit on some of these issues that face them? Well, one surefire way for members of Congress to get a reluctant cabinet member in front of them uh, in a hearing room on Capitol Hill is to, to make them testify to get their appropriation. Uh, so Congress is using that, the House is using that as leverage over uh, Merrick Garland today. Now, as far as the, the tape of the Biden interview, I don't really expect anything to happen. I have actually asked a few of the Republicans on the Hill whether there was any precedent uh, for a special counsel like Robert Herr releasing uh, the audio tape of an interview. We have the transcript already. Uh, and they said, well, this is just unprecedented times. And uh, I think the answer, that means the answer is no. There mm. really is a precedent. So we're probably not going to mm. hear any audio tape. Another topic here. Uh, you look at President Biden's trip this week. I mean, he is really, he is underlining the importance of Pennsylvania for a Democratic candidate in this campaign. He's going to be in Scranton today. He's going to be in Pittsburgh. Tomorrow he's going to be in Philadelphia uh, on Thursday. And if you look at the Wall Street Journal battleground polls, Trump leads in six or seven of those. It's, it's tight all across the board, uh, with the exception of Wisconsin. Uh, one point here about Pennsylvania. We were talking about this a bit earlier. Joe Biden won Pennsylvania by 81,000 raw votes. Yet, in Pittsburgh, he won Allegheny County by 147,000 raw votes. And in Philadelphia, the margin was 471,000 votes. That's where you go if you're a Democrat trying to win the Keystone State. Yeah, it, it absolutely is. And if you look, we've seen a bunch of polls from Fox News and otherwise uh, about some of the king's, uh, uh, key states, uh, Arizona, Georgia, Nevada, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Michigan. Uh, and you, you mentioned Wisconsin as uh, perhaps the brightest spot for Joe Biden, but Pennsylvania is really, really tight. I mean, if you look in Arizona and Georgia right now, Trump has a significant uh, lead. Uh, he might uh, have such a good lead in Michigan as well, but Pennsylvania, where Joe Biden feels, I think, a little sense of possession, he's actually from Pennsylvania, uh, so I think he feels like he really, really, really has to win there. Yeah, Byron, um, you know, you look across the board of the topics that uh, matter in the election. You see that Trump has really gained uh, leverage in the economy, in uh, the country better off, unifying America. But Katie Couric had this to say about what she thinks is actually driving the Trump voter. Watch. Socioeconomic disparities are a lot, and class resentment is a lot what, and anti-intellectualism and elitism is what is driving many of these, these anti-establishment, which are Trump voters. What's your thought on that, Byron? <laughs> well, it seems kind of like a, kind of a group think uh, Manhattan or the Hamptons uh, mm -hmm. view. Uh, this is an extraordinary race, almost unprecedented race, because the voters are choosing between two candidates who have both been president of the United States. Exactly. And I, I just wrote yesterday about a New York Times poll asked a really interesting question, was, which is, looking back, uh, do you think the Donald Trump presidential years were mostly good for America or mostly bad for America, and asking the same thing about the Joe Biden years. And, and Trump had a significant lead over Biden mm. with those voters who said that his time in office was good. People have a personal remembrance. It's not that long ago. Uh, they think the economy was doing better for them. They think Trump was a better leader. Uh, so this is an, a really amazing race. Uh, in which both candidates have been president, yeah. uh, and voters are making their own decisions. Yeah. On it's, a, it's such a fascinating observation, and then you pile on top of that the nostalgia factor that kicks in for a president when he leaves office, and you've got this president who then, at the moment of that, is going to run again, which is something none of us have ever experienced. So, Byron, thank yeah. you very much. Thank you, Byron. Thank you. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilney. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.